YouTube, thank you for clicking on the video. So over the weekend, I was scrolling the Twitter feed and I came across this from Smitty, which basically breaks down the SCAR or the TAC-56 class that the majority of the CDL pros are using right now. At least the guys over on Boston Breach who Smitty works with to create content for their socials and stuff. Now, anybody who's been around the channel for the last couple of weeks knows that with my Orion grind done, I've basically been looking at this mastery grind where you have to get a thousand total kills with every weapon in the game, 100 with gold camo, 200 with platinum, 300 with polyatomic, and then 400 with Orion to unlock this fancy little weapon charm. And then at the end of it, there's supposed to be some kind of like hidden surprise or like unlockable. I don't think it's been fully revealed yet. And if it has, then there actually might not be that much to work for. But either way, content's a little stale right now. So that's what I've been working towards. As you can tell, I've been working on my TAC 56 and I've already got over 700 kills with this, which means that I'm onto the final stage of this challenge. And when I saw the CDL load out, I figured, screw it. I'm going to throw it together. I'm going to give it a run in multiplayer and see how it feels. So that's what I've got right now on the TAC 56. We've got the 17.5 inch Tundra Pro barrel, FJX Fulcrum Pro muzzle, the Edge 47 undergrip, the demo clean shot rear grip, and finally the TVX line pro stock. Now, a bunch of people probably already familiar with this setup or very similar. I myself, I haven't bothered to go and look what the pros are using right now. So this is going to be fun. Something different for me. I've also got this Christmas sticker on my gun, which for some reason I just can't get rid of. Like I just, I can't remove it. It says my large decal is blocked by stickers and my stickers, it says is blocked by decal and I can't touch either of them. So that's great. There's so many little intricacies and stuff like that in the game right now that are really just broken for like no apparent reason. Just little UI errors and stuff. It's super strange. I mean, we get buggy things with card every year, but I feel like this year, despite having like a three year production time, it's just like higher than ever. There's more than ever. Hold that. So speaking of using a pro class, I've actually just finished watching the CDL. I know not everybody's like super interested in it or even necessarily aware of it. I usually kind of like watch the majors and I watch champs. Try and stay generally aware of which teams have which players and who's winning the big one at the very least. But this year I'm making like a concerted effort to actually like watch all of the qualifiers for the majors, have a better idea of the form guide. Yeah, just a better overall understanding of the pro scene and, and everything like that. And of course, if you're going to find a setup that's good on a gun, I feel like you're going to be pretty hard done by to uh, find a better build than what a professional Call of Duty player has pulled together someone who plays the game for like 8, 10, 12 hours a day. And honestly, I'm having a lot of fun with this tack already. Those spawns are phenomenal. Like, I know we're on shimmer right now, but wow. Guess we can add that to the list of things that aren't really working very efficiently. I think this next update for Call of Duty, everything that's coming in season two and stuff, I think it's going to be a big one, like a real important one, especially just for the overall like 6v6 multiplayer experience. Warzone's a bit of a weird one. I know that everyone has their own opinions on Warzone, whether you like a battle royale or not, whether you even think it belongs in a Call of Duty. I know despite all the successes of Warzone, there's still plenty of people who don't like it, don't want to play it. Don't think it's very native to Call of Duty in general. I get it. Everyone has their own taste, you know? I say for me i'm a i'm a br guy so I, I love it well i mean i would if it worked but the big thing about warzone is it's free to play right like with updates everyone's always willing to come by and try things out again you might lose like a portion of the player base for forever like some people may see certain things and never be interested in, in playing warzone again right or at least they might say that but generally speaking if you can put an update out and market it well enough which let's face it activision are great at they've been selling us largely the same game for the last you know 10 15 years at this point you're always going to get people to hop back in but you compare that with Modern Warfare 2, which is obviously more of a traditional package. People have to pay, you know, 60, 70 quid dollars for whichever kind of country you're from. And I think you can really kill the player base in general. You know, people going and selling their copy, requesting refunds of digitals because they're overall not getting what they expect in terms of their value for money. I think that's like a stressor that the Warzone and other free to play games just don't really have. And I think, you know, season one has been real rough for Modern Warfare 2. I mean, we've seen that in their statements that they made around what's next with content, what's coming in season two. And, you know, nothing can ever be perfect. I don't think anybody expects that. But really, in Modern Warfare 2, one of the main problems that we've had, or I suppose the sweeping general main problem that we've had, is that we've kind of repealed on, on everything that sort of has made Call of Duty what it was over the last few years. And not even over the last few years. We're talking like 10, 15 years of experience that they've built making these games, they've just kind of backtracked on everything from losing hardcore mode, losing red dots on the minimap, some of the changes to the time to kill. You'd think after this many games, Activision in general would have figured out how to make the most efficient Call of Duty game that they could. You know, they already have a lot of data points around how successful different time to kills are, the kind of changes that people enjoy and that they don't across the overall gameplay experience. But instead of getting that, we kind of just get a series of changes for the sake of making changes.
Holy shit, thank god we got the CDL class on for this CDL SPMM lobby. Trophy down too. Give it the authentic COD League vibe. I think another thing it'll be interesting to see come season two is how they treat the perks. The perk packages is another one of those things that I feel like, you know, we got changed for the sake of having change. I don't think anybody really asked for, you know, preset perk packages or anything like that. Yeah, actually. That guy is not happy with me. Yeah, we've already seen that Activision have kind of conceded defeat on a lot of the changes in Warzone. We know that we're getting hardcore mode back, like the proper hardcore as well, not the realism mode that we've had in Tier 1. So it'll be interesting to see if the perks are one of those things that Activision are willing to lose on again and, and really repeal all of the changes that they made. I think one thing they do have to do, speaking of perks, is buff Battle Hardened, man. Like, the protection that Battle Hardened gives you against flashes is almost non-existent, and it really makes the perk just not worth using, at least not in my book. <laughs> Little 57, nothing special, but we'll take it. Honestly, it's no surprise, but this TAC 56. Okay. I don't even know what to say when that's the kind of interactions we're having.